media. Uh, people are without knowing the accuracy and the uh, authenticity of the information and the content that is put out in the internet. Uh, people just started sharing. And people in rumor, rural areas, especially in villages, just, they, just, they just believe it, whatever this that is shared in the internet. So in such a crisis situation, in such atmosphere, the role of religious leader becomes very important because the situation are in hopeless. Uh, they are in a very uh, anxiety situation. So the role of religious leader is to create an atmosphere where people will trust, people will hope for the best, and people will expect that, that God has given us the wisdom and knowledge, therefore to trust the vaccine that is being available and that is being done to the government as well as the medical department. Right, okay. Uh, so I just bring in uh, Swami Ji once again. Uh, Swami Ji. Uh, you, uh, your organization, the Ram Krishna Mission, is working in some of the most inhospitable and remote areas of the state as well. And I'm sure that you have played a, quite a bit of role in convincing people also because uh, this vaccination. Can you tell us uh, what what the RKM has been doing so far in uh, you know promoting this awareness regarding the vaccination, especially? Thanks, Mahasumi. That uh, we almost four days a week in different four routes our mobile medical unit goes to and every route touches almost eight or ten points they are mainly the junction of two three or more villages so whenever people are coming first we are asking them why you are not wearing mask they have the mask they are not wearing then immediately this will so in a little sarcastic way, our medical men, they always encourage that they should use mask and some other things and take care of the children and cleanliness. All these are informally told to them while treat, uh, attending to them about the elements for which they have come. This is one thing. Then in our regular dispensary at Limogra, Main Road, since the vaccination has started, I think within first 10 days, the health department approached us to give a space so that regularly one can arrange for vaccination. Immediately we permitted them. So for the last two and a half months almost, on a regular basis, unless the vaccine supply is short, health people workers are coming and regularly get, getting vaccination. So Limukra area, is very nicely covered with vaccine. In addition to that, at the request of our headman at Limokra, we have given our ashram campus also. We have a, that puja hall. So they are, even today we had vaccination <laughs> program there. Yeah. So in this way, we are participating in every possible way with the vaccination team. And so far, making our own devotees aware about that, right from the last Durga Puja, all which we did as per standard protocol issued by the government. Uh, we are continuously changing and none of our devotees visit our campus, though the number has severely reduced, but they come always with mask and uh, we continuously engage them. In the meantime, I have a standard procedure of encouraging people in two ways. In one way, we talk them about the positive side of taking vaccine, and whoever says, whatever is said, don't bother about that, take vaccine, at least you won't die, even if you get the disease. This is one way. In another way, in the midst of discussion and all other things, we tell about the very painful stories of how people are badly suffering, particularly those who have got affected by the coronavirus. So that type of videos that we share amongst our devotees group, this type of things also, because people generally obey rules out of two things, either out of fear or out of respect. So whatever we say, they may not always take seriously because we are not medical men, we are religious men, what do you know about medicine? So in that case, the second option, circulating information of very painful suffering, 
that creates a kind of anxiety and they are drawn towards that. And about the question that in the beginning, just in your introductory remark, you said, God is there. But suddenly, through prayer, we are not getting everything. My question is, in our scripture, there is a beautiful saying, the divine dispensation is this, the animals, carnivorous animals, they survive on other animals. But they have to jump and catch the animal. The animal doesn't enter into its mouth. Nahi suptasya singhasya pravishanti mukhe A deer doesn't come to the lion's mouth. Lion has to sage him. So similarly, God has given us abilities, all the foods and other things are there. But we need to collect them, cook them, process them and eat to get nutrition. So Absolutely. when God has given us the abilities, we must make best use of it. And that is why the proverb has come, God helps him who helps himself. Absolutely. So in Absolutely. Using all Absolutely. this type of avenues, we are trying to people who are in our country. Right. Okay. That's wonderful to hear all the work that you're doing, especially in convincing uh, people, you know, towards taking the vaccination. I come to the most reverend bishop once again. Uh, most reverend bishop, uh, what is the scene like in Garo Hills? Because we are more aware of uh, our side, you know, the Khasi Hills, the Jainti Hills. What is going on in the Garo Hills area? How how is your uh, church and you know doing the role of convincing people? And when they are hesitant, what more do you think needs to be done really in this regard? In Garo Hills, I feel as a whole the situation is quite good. Vaccination vaccine hesitancy is not that much. The West Garovils has been doing very well, quite well, comparing to the other districts. And most of our Catholic institutions are in West Garovils. Mm -hmm. uh, two areas doing quite badly are South Garovils and uh, North Garovils. Mm -hmm. We have very few institutions there. But uh, as far as I know, those places are also more remote and uh, it is difficult to reach out to people especially now there is a curtailment of movements and then uh, religious uh, places are closed and then the religious worship is also not permitted so uh, in the village levels so much of uh, visits are not taking place especially because of two remote areas but i feel as a whole from the point of religion asset i don't think there is much of consistency in uh, Garo Hills. That is my experience. Uh, I mentioned some points, but this kind of hesitancy, I don't think it is coming from uh, religious beliefs because there is nothing in Christianity which goes against vaccination in my belief. And it is my firm conviction because we in Garo Hills, we, the bishops were the first ones to take vaccine, including the 90-year-old Emeritus Bishop, Bishop George Mamalaseri. And uh, Pope Francis was also the first one to take in Vatican. And he said, taking vaccine is not only morally licit, but it is, it is a moral obligation for yourself, for your family, and for your neighbor and the society. So this is what we are trying to do through our churches, through our priests, religious, and uh, our faithful scattered all over Garukis. Right. So I bring in uh, Pastor Walang once again. Uh, Pastor, is there, uh, can you cite uh, certain examples like uh, what the Most Reverend also has uh, said, that in, in the Bible we don't have any such thing that, you know, don't take the vaccine, don't get yourself protected. There's nothing like that. So can you cite certain examples uh, which, which may be there in the Bible too, as to how important it is everybody's, uh, you know, it is everybody's responsibility really uh, to protect not only oneself, but also protect others in their turn. Thank you for that uh, question, Dr. Day. Uh, I wish to address it this way. When you look at the scriptures, the Bible that we use, uh, and in fact, it's, 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 it's true with many denominations and many religions, we always look for a positive thing. In a sense, why is there religion or why is there a church? Because we want to save lives. Uh, I'm talking from the Christian perspective. We are, we, we are in the process of saving lives, we say. 
lives which are spiritual in nature. But at the same time, when you look at the Bible throughout, I just want to cite a text that we find actually in the third letter of John, uh, uh, verse 2, where it says, God is so concerned of us and he wants us to be in good health. God is not really happy when, when, when someone is sick. Of course, in this uh, world which is uh, flooded with sin, we, we have to go through difficulties and sickness. But God is so concerned that all of us have health. Uh, the wise man says in the book of Proverbs that the wise look after knowledge and knowledge that convinces them. And I also uh, happened to stumble across a very beautiful proverb that I find in my scriptures. Laughter is the best medicine. So the Bible is not against medication. The Bible is not against uh, uh, vaccination or inoculation per se. The, the, the Bible teaches us that we need to strive uh, towards a healthful living. I want to mention another point here. We all live in this world, and whatever knowledge we have, whatever wisdom we have, it is all God-given. And uh, if you really look at God, God wants that the human race needs to be, you know, needs to, to be healed, so to speak. Now, coming to the case of the pandemic, uh, of course, we are talking of the COVID-19 pandemic right now. I think the very fact that a vaccine came in a period of just one year. There has been some divine intervention here. All right, we'll not get into the integrities here, but let's just talk in broad strokes. We don't have, uh, we don't have maybe a system that is foolproof, even uh, in, in, in diseases that has affected human race for, for decades and maybe for hundreds of years. But right now, as we talk, you know, in the case, case in point, the COVID-19 pandemic, I think God wants us to be whole. God wants us to be healthy. God wants us uh, to, 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 to live a happy life. And we can do that actually by trusting in him. Uh, see, I, I, I think I personally feel that faith cannot be presumptuous. Faith is never presumptuous. Faith cannot exist in a vacuum. Faith is something that happens day in and day out. Faith is something actually that, that is very pertinent to the ways how God works in our life. Of course, our scripture says that faith uh, is believing in the unseen. But when you look at scripture in totality, faith actually is based on evidence. And now if you and I have to believe in, in, in what we have at hand today, we are talking of the vaccine. I think based on the evidence, we can establish we can establish that the vaccine can do something to protect us. Absolutely. So all I wish to say is this. Right. As we live in this world, especially in the state, it's very much incumbent on us to, to, to really look at the good side of things. Of course, it is one thing to take something out of fear. Maybe it's something to take something out of respect. But I think in between this, there is evidence and evidence that is not just hearsay. It is evidence that convinces the mind. And I would like to salute the, you know, the scientists who have come about with, with this. And I urge everyone actually to really consider this con conscientiously. And we have to really uh, make a choice because if you have to save yourself, if you have to save the community at large, I think this positive choice is very, very, very important. Absolutely. And I'm so, I'm so, so, so thankful that you've stressed on this. It is indeed now or never, you know, to, to rely on this, uh, on our scientific community who has been working very hard, you know, and they've brought out this. It didn't come easy. We worked day in, day out, you know, sleepless nights Absolutely. sometimes they had to. And then they found this protection and uh, we need to go ahead and take it. But then uh, in, in the next segment, when I come back, uh, we will be talking especially on the hand holding between the, you know, the government and the religious leaders, how important it is actually for the government agencies, for the government and the religious leaders, religious institutions also to hold hands uh, 
together and work together towards uh, this cause. We will come back uh, in the next segment, but before that, uh, we are just going in for a very, very short break for some important messages. Viewers, stay with us. We will be right back. Hey, Kong Deng, where to? Seems like somewhere special. Yes, it's special. I am very proud to be a part of India's largest vaccination drive. Are you not worried? Why will I be? Instead, I should be worried if I'm not vaccinated. But people are saying so many things. People will always have something to say. Will it really protect me from COVID? Vaccination doesn't mean you're 100% COVID proof, but your immune system will be strong enough to fight even if you contract COVID-19 and it is not life-threatening. I heard it has severe side effects. There may be mild side effects like fever or chills or maybe headache. But that's normal. It will wear off on its own. But is it really safe? Of course, it is absolutely safe and backed up by medical professionals, doctors, engineers, politicians, and many more are chosen from all sections of the society to be vaccinated. Yes, you are right. I will also get vaccinated immediately. Don't waste your time anymore listening to fake news and gossip. Take a decision to get vaccinated with confidence. National Health Mission, Government of Mega. Kublai, atu pita bayu kenyang jepang COVID kat kendai, laban penduk jang, the manga wat mafi. Hoi, ringkat lang, nila. Alay bang ha, nantun i, kumno. Ha gano gano gupor, ba pijur ho, ni sinriya, kenma berbor, ba pijay bandai laga cintur, daga jain jumal. Kat bala, Yale when Perking Yell dear, when Kta Ilaki Kman, the Kmut, but Ilaka Shintur. Sight by Yelaki Jongi Kti, the Kasabon Kumba Arpo second AA. Pinzangai, you way new way, but the Kimau, when Yang Zangai, Kumba and Rufut AA. Kabakong San A Kade, when Dengi Kimas, Manlakapur, away the surgical mass, but away the mass giant Nalor. With a Pidan Ganogan over Jimpang, Kumka Jerho, Kishit, Pinhir. Thaitman Kapoor, Shitam Ban Ring Man Siem, Do Akhubor Jimma, Bat Akhubor Jimsma. Phone, Shaki Health Center, Kibadam Hajan Jongki, Lani Pilak Ban Kual, Yau Ni Utol Free Number, Iwai Sao, Sao Iwai Nuat, Nam Tai Kino Gino, Hijing Yerau. Yerau Bingi, Bingi Yerau Bipi. National Health Mission, Government of Megalaya. Welcome back everyone. And thank you very much for staying on with us. Uh, let me just remind you once again that you are in a live panel discussion being brought forward on behalf of National Health Mission, Government of Meghalaya. And today, of course, the topic is uh, pandemic protection and religion. And herein, we are looking into the roles and the responsibilities of religious leaders during this COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, we are, of course, uh, very, very delighted to have a very esteemed panelist with us. We have with us uh, the most reverend Bishop Joe Shirakul, who is the Auxiliary Bishop of Tura. We also have as a panelist uh, Ronald Andrew Walla, who is the pastor in charge, Seventh-day Adventist Church in Laitum Prashalong. As our panelist, we also have uh, Tinel Armara, who is the pastor of Garo Baptist Church, Bishnapur Shalong. And... Uh, we also have with us Swami Hita Karanda Maharaj Ji, who is the secretary, Ram Krishna Mission Shalom. So those of you who have uh, joined us late, let me tell you, you've missed quite a bit of interesting discussion that we had so far. But then we still have a couple of I'm sure that we will continue to have a very fruitful discussion. So welcome back, uh, our panelists. And uh, as I said before going in for that short break, that when we come back, we will be looking into the, you know, the holding of hands between the government and the religious institutions or the religious leaders in changing mindset. I think this is very important at this juncture that if we can work together, if, you know, if, if, if all agencies can work together, I think the results will be much more fruitful. Let me come to, uh, uh, you know, Pastor uh, Thinel Armara. In this uh, regard or in this context, uh, how important do you see personally, you feel that holding hands together to fight together, to change mindsets together, how important it is? Okay. Uh, thank you, Moshmi. Yeah, it's very important as of now uh, when people are hesitating to uh, come forward uh, to get themselves vaccinated. 
it is very important to create an awareness program uh, along with the government officials, the health department, uh, taking up together and holding camps in the rural areas and make people aware about the importance of this uh, vaccine, as well as also telling them that if they are not getting themselves vaccinated, the virus is so vulnerable, it can attack everyone, it can spread to every everywhere. So taking that into mind, uh, we can help programs in the rural areas. We can conduct some kind of programs even through the uh, churches uh, by collaborating with the medical team and then conducting such programs so people would be aware about the importance of this uh, vaccine. And talking about uh, this the vaccine and the uh, vaccine hesitancy, especially in, in the Garo community, in my community, there are people who are like what Bishop had said in the beginning. Uh, they take it very lightly. They are very complacency. Uh, some say that this is just some kind of malaria, uh, some kind of common cold, uh, which would come and which would go away. But then people are not so serious. But then, uh, like what the Bishop had said, that uh, as a Christian, as a Bible believing a Christian, we should not be uh, hesitant to come forward and take vaccine. But then there are certain people who are reluctantly, even though they believe in the Bible, they believe in God, but still they are reluctant to come forward and get themselves vaccinated because certain uh, beliefs and certain uh, certain Bible prophecy, uh, which is mentioned in the book of Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 to 18, as I have mentioned in the beginning about the, the mark of the beast, the 666 people are thinking that this vaccine is the mark of the beast. Because of that reason, also people are not coming forward. So I would like to tell my Garu community a little bit in one or two in my languages. Ayasumayo ani plak kasarang ni acet jo adar pengan na ayasumayo vaksin ni keman aro ay COVID pandemic ni keman kandek ya ana nabnka mandirang ya vaksin ko cadok sotok tok ni bibera inga aro unbaksa na ya ana mana mai kepa sabi sisa ni mana negara ya topinga. Nikita <laughs> May na kaman yako COVID vaccine ko sa tapos 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 ni bibira kin sa mga di ang sing tuli bibira ko sa nung ay gin may na yah dako pa even nara local even nung sa ba national even nung sa agar sa kamagkan yah even ko yah sa tapos 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 sa grung gin ni kaman megalayo yah gusto mo ani kaman yah ko sa tapos 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 ni bibira ani na men tuli bibira ni sa nung ay so I would like to tell even the people to come forward and take themselves get themselves vaccinated and uh, help the medical department as well as the government officials who are working day and night uh, to vaccinate in the rural areas who are doing work who are working day and night to promote uh, a good life and good health for the people uh, so i would like to encourage to come forward and get them to vaccinate absolutely and it's wonderful that you spoke uh, surgeon lines in garo also for our garo listeners and viewers who are watching this program i'm sure you know listening to you they are feeling a little bit more confident and i'm sure that they are also you know uh, would uh, feel uh, more impressed uh, to go ahead and take the vaccine i would like to now come uh, to swamiji once again uh, swamiji as i addressed this question a little while back i'm sure that you will also you know understand and you would uh, you know uh, understand the need of holding hands you know that uh, agencies uh, along with the government should come together to work you know to collaborate and to work together tell us some of the innovative ways uh, of course there has a lot of innovative mechanisms that has been adopted so far but what according to you are some of the innovative ways that can still be you know adopted especially towards the rural areas because i think convincing the rural areas is more important because they are a little remote maybe information do not filter the correct information do not reach them also 